Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be going over a bit of tech that I used in Tyrant's Lament that I got quite a few comments asking about how I did it, and that is getting system time and real time in Minecraft using MC Function, the sort of in-game programming language thing that we have access to in vanilla Minecraft, and it's a lot more powerful than people think. There are a lot of little tricks and stuff, and I'll probably showcase weird stuff in the future, but today we're going to be talking about both system time and Unix time. Those are two very different things. System time is the clock that is on your computer. Uh, I use that to sort of set the sun position in this map so that the sun's position is roughly accurate to what it should be where you live, like what's going on right now. You can sort of see that it's around midday, it's about 3 o'clock right now, so that's pretty accurate to what it should be. And then there's Unix time, which is a coordinated time that is the same everywhere. And it is coordinated out of... or it's the amount of seconds since January 1st, 1970. And that's why I think in the video where I talked about a lot of the tech in this, I said that the seed I use for the mountain generation is the amount of days since January 1st, 1970. So that's the sort of reason behind me saying that. But we're going to be looking into how to get both Unix time and system time. And we're going to be starting with Unix time since that's a little bit more interesting. And then system time, which is really easy. So the first thing you need to do to get Unix time is to place a player head. Now this may seem kind of nonsensical, but inside of a player head, if we do data get block here, and we look here, we have this weird mash of letters and numbers, and this right here is base 64. To the human eye, this is a completely nonsensical value, but using a little utility made by Dorkork and Coppertone on MCC, we can decode this into a human readable value. If I then do uh, data get storage that, we can look, we have an output here, and this is human readable, but this is not readable by the game. To read it by the game, I then have to do an extra step to sort of deconstruct this JSON object into something that I can get the data out of more directly. So if I do data get storage uh, sys decode, we then have all of this deconstructed in a way where I can then do something like this. And this right here is our Unix time. But there is a single problem here. That being, this is way too long. This is not actually Unix time in seconds. This is Unix time in milliseconds. It goes all the way to the 1,000th of a second. And that is way too high of a resolution than we need. And it makes it so this number's outside of the integer range. So what I have to do is using the new string data provider, I can truncate this string. I can basically say I want my new string to start at the first position, starting at zero, since in arrays index from zero. I want to remove the last three characters from it. So if I run this and then get our value again, you can see our three numbers have been removed. And now this is a number that is short enough to fit within an integer, a 32-bit integer. But we're still using a string here. This is not a value that we can set into a score or whatever. So using macros again, I have a fairly long command that I run in the map. And I'm going to show this just to sort of justify the command that I do. I store into a timestamp score, but I also store into the day as well as the seconds. And what I run here is this function, uh, a get timestamp function. But the thing is, this function is a singular command. Since we cannot define macros in line, I have to basically run a function that is literally only this command. This right here is what a macro looks like. We have the timestamp, which since I am uh, using this storage that I looked at before as a base, we are inserting this value here, the timestamp value, into this command, and we are returning it. And that basically just allows me to store all of that stuff. All, the return command is a little weird, but it does allow you to do stuff like this. So that is how I get Unix time. It's way easier now than it used to be. And macros and the string data operation are just a godsend. But that is how I get Unix time. 
and I've already gone over pretty much all the uses I have for it in the map in the previous video. So now let's talk about the last thing I wanted to talk about, which is the system time. Now system time is way easier to get because we don't need to decode base64 and then deconstruct an outputted base64 string and then grab our timestamp string and stuff. We basically already get our timestamp string directly from a command block. If I go ahead and place a command block, let's actually talk about this real quick. This command here that we're placing into the command block, help me, is unironically, genuinely the best command to use for this because the output of it is the shortest possible output from a command. Now, when I said we get the timestamp directly, we don't really get it directly, but we do get it as a string. Right here is our timestamp. This is system time. Right now it is 3.15 p.m. Now, in the map, I only use the hour, but you can do some extra stuff to get the minutes and seconds if you need it. But I'm just gonna show how I get the hour, which is to directly run this command here we are outputting we're, we're copying that string with an index so if i go ahead and get the data of this uh, block here we have our last output this is the entire command we are basically going from the tenth character in this string which happens to be starting right here and we are ending at the 35th character from the end, which happens to be right here. And this just allows me to not have to worry about any weird, or uh, anything like this not having a leading zero. So if it's only hour five into the day or something, if there's no zero here for whatever reason, I don't know. I never actually tested if the game has leading zeros in the system timestamp, so I just kind of did this instead of saying I want it to start at the 10th position and stop at the 12th position. I just don't, I didn't bother to test it, so here we are. Um, that is how I get the system time. Doing this, I can then get get that value, and as you can see, it is 15, and that is the current hour. And then to actually set the time, I then use that as a macro argument in a function. I do this and I add three zeros to actually make it correspond to Minecraft time. And then I add 18,000 to it. So the sun is in the correct position because Minecraft time zero is like 6 a.m. around sunrise uh, instead of zero being midnight where the moon is directly down. But that is everything to do with time in this map, as well as sort of how to get time in Minecraft for whatever project you may want to use. I will have that Base64 library that I use in this map linked down in the description if you want to use it in your own project or whatever. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I will catch you all next time.